convention of Inspire that Mitzvah Shem will become an annual event. The Neshamas are really crying out for help, for chizuk, for kilu. Is easy, enjoyable, affordable, and it's a tremendous obligation. We will fulfill the shift to Shiva and Ulo. At this moment in Jewish history, when you're the only one that can help us, and you're not going to even try. Find them, bring them closer. The Yakirenu will see Oiroi. All it takes to impact another Jewish neshama is already within us. Through that bizoyche, to see a soul, a neshama in front of you. In every generation, there are individuals that are beating the drum. And with that, welcome everybody to the Matzah Shabbos program of the 10th annual Project Inspire Convention. I was trying to think back over the last, over the last 10 years, 10 conventions, 10 trailblazing conventions. It was so hard to pinpoint moments of each convention. But who could forget the very first time the traveling Hasidim graced the, graced the stage at the Project Inspire convention? And who could forget when a nine-year-old boy, Dylan, wrote a chocolate book and raised over a million dollars and taught us we could all accomplish the impossible? Who remembers that? <laughs> who could forget Alex Clare gracing the stage in Kalahari Resorts? And the list goes on and on and on. And here we are again at the 10th annual convention. And I assure you that however hungry you are and whatever pizza is waiting for you outside, you will not want to miss one minute of tonight's program. You have my word. I ask you all that you keep your cell phones on you. You can keep them on. We're going to need them as the program goes on. Hate to be so intriguing with cell phones as if people were actually going to shut them. <laughs> but nevertheless, I'm just prompting you that you'll need it throughout the program. We've constantly reminded ourselves over this amazing Shabbos about our responsibility to Klal Yisrael. We reminded ourselves that we're the solution to tackle Klal Yisrael's biggest problem. And we are tackling it. And you've heard so much about it over this Shabbos. We, lo we learned about loving Yiddishkeit so that we can share our own Yiddishkeit. We've learned so much. And we're going to learn more about that tonight. To start off this evening's program, it's appropriate once again to introduce to you the International Director of Project Inspire, Rabbi Chaim Samson.
Good fach. I hope you all had a wonderful Shabbos. I certainly did. So thank you. We mentioned before that we had the privilege of having Yehuda Weinberg here, the son of the Rosh Hashiva of Noah. And the famous story that the Yehuda's bris that Rav Noach used to tell, that Rav Shach came and he came to Esha Torah and he looked around the room and he saw people learning and he asked, that guy over there who's steiging away, he's a Baal Tshuva? And Rav Noach said, yeah, he's a Baal Tshuva. Yeah, that guy there who's really like, you know, learning it up, he's a Baal Tshuva? And Rav Noach said, yeah, he's a Baal Tshuva. And Rav Noach would say that in honor of Rav Noach, Rav Shach said the following thing. That he said, in praise of Rav Noach, that it says in the Pesach, Shuva ad Hashem elokecha ki koshalta ba'ovanecha Return to the Lord your God because you have stumbled in your avonos. And he asked, we understand it says, Shuva ad Hashem lokecha. We understand that. But why do you need to say, Ki koshalta ba'ovanecha? We understand. You do tshuva because you made mistakes. So he answered that from the avonos, from the mistakes that are made, for the, from the chatayim, we can learn about how far we can go. And he said that if one person could kill six million Jews, and you see how bad it can be when it's bad. How much more so, Mida Tova Maruba, that the Almighty wants us to give the good. Wants to give the good to us. How much more so, one person can save six million Jews. And he said that in praise of Rav Noach. And really the truth is, Rav Noach used to teach this to us as Talmudim all the time. And he used to tell us, Bishvili nivra ha'olam, that a per every person is oblig obligated to say, the world was created for me. It's my world. Why? Because the world is run by a Kodesh Baruch Hu for each and every one of us. He's running the whole world for our pleasure. And at the same time, it's my world. It's my responsibility. A person was created to, alone to realize it's my world and I'm responsible for it. And I can change the whole world on my own if I only will it. The world was created for me. And the Chavetz Chaim backs this up in Chomas Adas. And he explains the story of King Yoshiahu, whose father was a king who was Chote Omachti, who brought him up as a child who knew nothing. He didn't teach him a Pasuk, nothing. But when they were Machazek, the base of Mikdash, and he walked in, they found a Sefer Torah, and he started reading the Psukim that he'd never seen before. And he got to the, to the Pasha that it says, Aror, Asher lo yakim es divri ha Torah hazos. Cursed is the person who doesn't fulfill, who doesn't stand up the words of the Torah. And as we understand that that means that if a person doesn't try to bring Torah to the Jewish people when it's not being upheld, there's a curse. And says Yoshiahu, he looks at the Psukim and he says, Alayla Hakim, it's on me to bring them back. The Kachava, and that's what happened. King Yoshiahu brought back all of Klal Yisrael from nothing. He didn't know anything. He brought everyone back. But he was the king. Says the Chafetz Chaim, in his days, it was the king who was responsible. But in our days, it's anyone who cares. 
Anybody who cares, it's his or her responsibility to bring back the Jewish people, and it can be done. We're at the 10th annual convention, and as Yassi was explaining, look how far we've come. Baruch Hashem, there's so much happening. There's so much that's so much good. 10,000 people that have taken care of training programs. Thousands and thousands of people that have gone to Israel because of people like yourself that have stood up and said, we're going to do something. The traveling Hasidim, the, 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 so many different types of people doing so many different types of things. Thousands of gifts that have been given to people. Thousands of people learning together one-on-one. -on -one. Thousands of different events that are being run in New York, New Jersey, all over New York, Toronto by lay people that never been done before. So at a time like this, it's certainly appropriate to give a little thanks. Our first thanks, of course, is to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But how can we go through a 10th convention and not say thanks to the Hymans? Yeah, see. We have a little gift. We have a little gift here. There's a reason why I said what I just said. A beautiful painting that we just had painted for them. On the top it says, Bishvili Nivra Olam. The world was created for me because the Heitmans have certainly taken responsibility for the world. And Boruch Ashe Yakim is Divriyat Terazos, that our Mephoshim explained that for every Klala there was a bracha that was said first, that the Haiman certainly deserved that bracha of upholding the Torah. And we wrote, presented to Stuart and Andrea Haiman on the 10th annual Project Inspire Convention, thank you for taking responsibility for the entire world by awakening the sleeping giant and bringing Torah to Am Yisrael. May Hashem bless you and your family, the Dure Doros. Thank you so very much. Stuart, if you'd like to come up. There was a lot of talk, especially last night, if you were up at 2.30 in the morning. How do we keep the Torah? How do we maintain it in our own families, our children, our community? And I think there were a couple of points. I was speaking with my dear friend, Hezki Kauftal, who's joined us for the Shabbos. And we were talking that really, it's simple. Like Rav Noach used to say, and he used to say over and over again, that all the Torah can be basically boiled down as Chavakuk did, Ma'amidim al-Achas, Tzadik be'emunah so yichya. A person has to have emuna. And Rav Noach used to say, what's the essence of emuna? The essence of emuna is understanding that HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves us. And as Rav Noach used to say in an in inimicable way, that's the whole point of, of life, is emuna. To understand the essence of that is that Hashem loves us, and the whole point of life is to keep banging that away at ourselves and our children so we get it into us, that we really feel it deeply. And I think the second thing that we're understanding is that the Torah is a Marasha Kehilas Yaakov. It belongs to everyone. 
Rav Yaakov Weinberg, the Tzal, my Rebbe, used to explain that the school system that we have was really instituted, as the Gemara says in Baba Basra, by Rav Yeshua Ben Gamla. And it says over there that it's El Male Yeshua Ben Gamla, Hayan Nishtacha Torah Mi Israel. Torah would have been forgotten. Why so? So he explains that really it was a time when there were orphans in Klal Yisrael, many orphans. And it used to be before we had school system that had a children learn Torah, their parents would teach, their father would teach them at the home. But those poor orphans didn't have a father to teach them. And as they grew in number, what do you do? So what did Yeshua Ben Gamla? He instituted schools for everyone. Everyone. Ask Rabbi Yaakov Weinberg, just, you know, make a school for the orphans maybe? No, 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 no. That would be discriminating against them. So because of them, the whole system was completely changed. Everybody goes to schools because you have to care deeply about the sensitivities to an orphan. It says Rav Yaakov Weinberg, if it wasn't for this, Nishtachach Torah Yisrael, Torah would have been forgotten from the whole Jewish people. But why so? Imagine what would have happened. So we would have had people learning Torah and we would have been insensitive to orphans. But there would have been a lot of Torah being learned. There would have been Gedolim being produced. Says the Gemara and Baba Basra, that Torah would have been forgotten for, from the Jewish people. Explains Rav Yaakov Weinberg, why? Because Torah is not just about me and my learning. Torah is the, in the context of Klal Yisrael. And if you don't think about it in that context, and you don't care about Klal Yisrael, it's the whole of the Torah, all that learning, Nishtacha Torah Mi Yisrael, it's going to be forgotten. Because Torah is not just about me. It's about Klal Yisrael. How much more so in our generation, when thousands of people, when 90% of our brothers and sisters don't have Torah, how much more so we can't just keep learning on our own? That if we want to benefit for ourselves even, the way to do it is what Rav Noah has taught us, is by reaching out to those out there, because that's what the Torah is about. You can only learn in the context of caring about Klal Yisrael. And that's what Project Inspire has been about. Baruch Hashem, we've just stated some of the beautiful things that we've been doing, that we've been Zoha to do. And Baruch Hashem, over the last several years, we've been doing that in New York, New Jersey, and in Toronto. But over the past year, we, were, we decided, the Heimans wanted it, and they were right. <laughs> it's good that what we've done. Well, we have to bring it everywhere. We have to create a movement. And we started doing that. In different, going to different places, Baruch Hashem, this year we went to four new places and there's so many more that are waiting for us to come to with your help. Let's see what we did this year. I thank you. I thank my team for, for everything they did. Thank you so much. I thank the grocers for this convention. Without that, what they did, we wouldn't be here today. Isaac, Edie, thank you so very much. My team, I thank you all. Thanks to you for being here. We're going to make a difference. We're going to change the world. Please see what we're doing now. I thank you. Let's move forward together. Akutva. Learning, growing, sharing. Creating communities, developing friendships, building bridges, and ultimately, inspire. Welcome to J-Inspire, a division of Project Inspire. The Kirov movement to date has been widely successful, but the Kirov of tomorrow will be more vibrant, more meaningful, and more powerful than ever before. Because it's all about you. J-Inspire has helped to change the communities of Brooklyn, Rockland, 
Queens, Long Island, Manhattan, Bergen County, and Toronto. Now we move onwards. It's time for us to expand, to provide the tools to get the ball rolling, to create a cure revolution across the nation. In Baltimore, Jay Inspire partnered with the local Kirov organization, Eitz Chaim. Sixteen local shuls participated in our Shabbos of Inspiration. The result? Wow. A community galvanized, becoming actively involved, and Balabatim volunteering to become shul ambassadors, study partners, and sharing their knowledge with others. In Buenos Aires, Argentina, home of the largest Jewish community in Latin America, we activated the local community to get involved, inspiring the youth. Boots on the ground, focused and determined, creating one-on-one learning programs, five Tu B'Shvat Seders, and developing lasting relationships. In Cincinnati, a young idealistic Orthodox community desire to reach out to its neighbors called upon Jay Inspire for direction and motivation. A Shabbos of inspiration becomes the impetus for a steering committee, an enhanced outreach experience, and a larger Torah partner program. And in Phoenix, one local Orthodox woman becomes a Jay Inspire community leader, coordinating study sessions, recruiting volunteers, developing social programs, organizing mezuzah distribution, and preparing Shabbos parties, making real changes in her community, one Jay Inspire event at a time. Soldier to soldier, family to family, Jew to fellow Jew, these are the new faces of Jay Inspire. It's not about the Kirov guy anymore. It's about all of us. The Orthodox community in cities all over the United States are ready to heed the call and get involved. The Kirov of tomorrow is just beginning. In these communities and beyond, it's a new world, a new beginning, and a new face of outreach. Ladies and gentlemen, the future of Kirov is you. Thank you, Rabbi Sampson. Thank you, Heitmans. Thank you, Gross family. We have opportunities as you leave tonight and even before you go home for this weekend. Everyone here can take an easy outreach gift with you to give to a fellow less affiliated Jew. It's what we call an easy outreach gift because it's just that it's easy outreach. On your way out today, we're selling them here. They could be ordered online. Please don't let the opportunity go by without, without taking one home with you. Additionally, as you'll see this evening, there are tables outside. Many of you travel. I know that many of you here are traveling on the upcoming Women's Age Destiny trip next week. 120 women in all, and people being closed out or joining a, what we call a second level, a, a, a purely age educational trip that's really second to none. Um, and on those trips, um, you're going to be coming across the Aish building, the Aish Torah World Center, the Dan family Aish Torah World Center in Jerusalem. And our offer to you is to get a free VIP tour whenever you come to the Aish building. There are cards outside with information as well. Uh, so please feel free to take one on your way out today. One of the reasons I love having this chus of inviting Diane Abraham to our convention and his Rebbitzin is because I get the feeling when I'm on the phone with them that I'm really doing them the biggest favor in the world when in fact it's really our biggest covet to have them here. Diane Abraham and his Rebbitzin have not only joined, like I said, three Project Inspire conventions, but Diane Abraham joined us on a Poland trip when we took from and non from people together to Poland. It just so happened that a group of secular Israelis were taking a tour of Poland, and they might not have gotten the same experience as our trip was having. And Diane Abraham made it his business and made it his mission to make sure that Achenu B'nai Yisrael, who were getting a possibly watered-down version of what the history of Poland was, to make sure that the Jewish neshama was ignited and they joined together in our trip in singing and dancing. 
It's therefore appropriate as we close out a decade of Project Inspire's convention, we're blessed again to have the Abrahams here, as you heard for the Dayan over Shabbos as well. It's my big cover to introduce to you Dayan, Jonas, and Abraham. Quite Harabonim, all the wonderful Robertson speakers, Rashus, the convention hosts, family Heitman, family Gross, Chaim Samson, and your whole team, the indefatigable Rabbi Yossi Friedman, <laughs> all the staff for this amazing, uplifting Shabbos. I was thinking, actually, when we heard the incredible tefillis of a shulam learner, there may be a shadow in halacha when, when you hear a voice which sounds like an absolute Stradivarius violin, almost the gzera of making a, a keli on Shabbos. What a beautiful tefillah and uplifting tefillis we had. What droshes and chizuk, Rabbi Waiwai and everybody who's spoken has uplifted all of us immeasurably. It's been a privilege to be here. And to be here for the 10th convention, having been here for a two or three in the past, to see that it gets stronger, broader, even more concentrated dose of inspiration. By the way, the word inspire count is somewhere up to 500. We're getting to the 1,000 promised. It's truly remarkable. My wife and I thank you all for making it possible for us to attend. And we look forward to this is Eurus and tremendous inspiration growing in our family and all our families, in Klali's role family, the Nachas the Tiferes Ulashem. A tenth anniversary or tenth convention, Mizmer Le Oser. In building the Mishkan, in the parishes we've been learning, the Torah tells us, like Rish Baruch who tells Meshir Abenu, Ubelev Kol Chacham Lev Nosati Chochmo, in the hearts of all those who are wise, Nosati Chochmo, I have given wisdom. There's a famous medrash about this. Sholem Atronis Achas is Rabbi Yisroel Rabbi Chalafta. A noble woman asked Rabbi Yisroel Rabbi Chalafta, the famous sage, "What is the meaning of the pasuk in Daniel, Yohev Chochmas Chochmas Hakimin, that Akedash Baruch Hu gives wisdom to the wise? The tipshin mi the wise have wisdom. Surely it's those who are lacking wisdom, the fools." Who require wisdom. On that, Rabbi Yisrael Chalafta answered the following. He said, if you had money to lend, a money, a hundred sloim, and you had a choice of lending it to an oni or to an oshir, to a poor person or a wealthy person, who would you lend it to? And she responded, I'd give it to the wealthier person because the likelihood of a successful return is much higher. The only may not pay it back. Said Rabbi Yisrael Chalafta, so too here. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave wisdom if he were to give it to the Tibshin, to the fools. They would use that wisdom for the Tartiois, for Karkisiois, for the places of entertainment, to invent ever greater X boxes and Y boxes and who knows whatever else boxes. They would use that wisdom and that advancement as tipshim to destroy life. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives wisdom to the wise. Yoiv chuchmas ala chuchmas ala chakimin. To the chachmei leiv who know what to do with it. On that, the manal of Gates of Yeshiva, Reb Leizer Khan Zuchani Lebrach asked a simple question. He said, how can you compare a gift to a loan? Wisdom is a gift, surely. Lending money is a loan with the intention to get it back. How can you compare the two? He said, the Medrash is telling us, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is investing in us and with us. The wisdom the wise have, the strength the strong have, all our talents, all our abilities, all that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given us are loans. 
and we are accountable for the abilities we've been given for what we do with them they're not gifts that gufa that is the chiddush of this madrash we're going to be held to account for what we have been given and how we used it says the apostle kuvaleiv kol chacham leiv nosati chokhmo hakanish gave the wisdom to build the mishkan not to the people who were brilliant but to the people who are wise at heart, who wanted to, who aspired to, who strive to do things, that person was worthy of the wisdom to be able to build a Mishkon, a Mikdosh, and bring Kedusha to Kalal Yisrael. Or as Ramban says famously, on the words, And each person whose heart volunteered him, lifted him, Vanod Varuchai, his spirit volunteered him. They came to build a Mishkan. Says the Ramban. What's the term? The Soy Libai Vanod Varuchai. Why the term of somebody whose heart willed him? Says the Ramban, because the people who came out of Mitzrayim had been building with bricks and mortar. They didn't know the finer details, the exquisite design of gold and silver. The embroidery, the Maasei Chayshev, the Malachas Machshoves, they weren't skilled and trained in these things. How could they do it? Says Ramban, as the Apostle says in Tivrei Hayomim, Vayigbar Libay Bedarke Hashem. And his heart became exalted, uplifted, inspired Bedarke Hashem. When the heart wills, when the person feels that sense of absolute responsibility, an aspiration, then the ability is unlimited. You find the wisdom within if your heart wants you to use it. That's how the Mishkan was built. That's how Kedushin Klali Stroll is brought. Not with the hands of artisans, but with the hearts of people who want to make a difference. Not with the brilliance and shining chokhmah of those given intellectual brilliance. No, those people who want to use chokhmah to serve Hashem and to bring Kedusha to Kalal Yisrael. All too often, we don't realize the gifts we've been given. The Chavis Salavavis and Shar HaKaniyo in Perek Gimel says the following, in identifying what humility is or submission before Hashem is, he says, there's one category of people who we think are submissive, we think they are anovim, they have anova, they have humility. People who are helpless and don't believe in themselves. He says, you find it in the animal kingdom and you find it in humans sometimes, lahavdil. They don't think of themselves, they don't realize and they're helpless. He says, such a person is not a, an onov. Such a person's submission is really because he's submission. Because he doesn't realize his sense of mission. If we don't realize what we have, if we don't aspire to use the koiches, if we excuse ourselves because we can't, it's not possible, I'm not able, he, she can. We don't realize those koiches we've been given, we're not serving our Kaddish Baruch with what we've been given correctly. We heard a beautiful vote from Rabbi Silva today, quoting the Talmidei Habesh about Shal Nalechem Al Raglecho. Meish Rabbeinu was told to remove the limitations, to unlock the potential. I mentioned the point the Chavetz Chaim explains the next part of the pasuk: Shal Nalechem Al Raglecho, unlock, release, remove that shoe, that constriction, that limitation, go beyond those boundaries. You will find that the very place you are is a Mokim Kodesh. We don't have to look for Kedusha there, or if only I was there, or I had that Koyach on this place, or by the Koyach, or wherever it may be. If only I had the ability of some of the incredible Makavir Rechaikim we've heard speak to us over Shabbos. If I was this person, this time, this point in history, says the Chovetz Chaim, no. Take those limitations off. Take off the blinkers. These are Kanish Baruch Hu's children. 
The apnea from Yitzchak Yaakov. Our other sinimois are waiting for every Jew to come back. We don't believe HaKadosh Baruch Hu should give us the koiches to say the right word and do the right thing. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu is waiting for each of them to come back, take off the blinkers. Because the place, the situation, each of us, you, me, every time and every opportunity, if the labor is willing, if we have that understanding, then the sky itself isn't the limit. We can change Kalal Yisrael and connect to the Kedusha, the infinite potential in every Neshama, and change the future of the world. But we have to realize it and feel it and believe it and unlock it. That's what Project Inspire, I believe, has set about to do and has succeeded incredibly in bringing so many people to the realization that without us all, without each and every one of us, his ability in the time and place we're in, with the abilities that we uniquely have, the job won't get done. Of course, the ultimate is we spoke about today, we had a beautiful shir this morning about it. To bring people to the Beis Hamedrash and to learn Torah. But the varied ways to get there and the routes and the portals and doors which they need to enter through are varied and as varied as the people we need to bring in, so too are the approaches. But the approaches is, as we heard from the Rosh Hashiva last night, about steak and wine. But it's a social time. But it's the outreach to gift and all the various things that we've heard. The one-on-one, -on -one, simply a nice word. Inspiring people by feeling they are brothers and sisters, however that may be. Ultimately, if it comes from the deeply embedded feeling, each and every one of us count, and each and every one of us is responsible and really desires with a chokhmah slave to make a difference, then the outcome is secure. One of my favorite insights into how lives can change in London, under the guise of not just of Aish, of Jewish Futures, of Rav Tali Schiff and his incredible organization, one of the wonderful Makarovim, Danny Smolowitz and his Rebetzin lived in a particular challenge, particularly challenging part of England, the area of northeast London known as Essex, which in its heyday had a large functioning kahila, which is shrinking been replaced to a large extent by migrants. Got a great Cockney accent for those who like it. Cockney accent is marvelous there. The busiest time they say is Motsi and Kippy here, thousands of engines, all the black taxi drivers who happen to be Jewish and live in Essex. The one time of the year you hear the, all the engines start to Motsi and Kippy together. Gives you a bit of a flavor of the place. So Rabbi Smolowitz gets there with his wife and starts inviting, finding students or kids, school age, Opening the house on a Friday night, 20, 30 children they invited. Open house. Instead of them going clubbing on a Friday night at a party, steak and wine, whatever else they could put on the table. An open house. And groups of children found themselves before going clubbing. They had a great meal beforehand. It was cheaper than going to anywhere else. So on a Friday night, groups would come and one such boy was invited. He was challenged to come. It's a great party by the rabbi. And he comes in, and he sees a table laid, food, there's going to be music or singing together. One condition, there was one requirement. He had to wait till the rabbi had stood up and made some chant over a cup of wine. You had to go and wash your hands, and then together they all had to make a blessing, which initially broke his teeth on, Moitzi Lechem Menores, Moitzi Lechem Menores, Belaz. Only then could the meal start. That was the only condition. He came the first Friday night, liked it, and came a second Friday night. A couple of months went by, and he was fluent in Amoitzi Lechem and Oretz. And then the question, the subtle question came, would you like to come on an age trip to Australia? Two weeks, subsidized, students together, great group. Surely, sure enough, he came with a good few friends find themselves in Australia with some incredible Rabbonim, inspirational times, 
I just, just picture to myself the Great Ocean Road and go up to Sydney and the Harbour Bridge and the, 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 the stars of Southern Cross, beautiful. And they find themselves one evening in the Shell Dome, a large football stadium. Now, for those who don't know, think of American rules football on steroids, probably is on steroids in any case, but still, American rules football much faster, but with no protective gear. 30 guys together on the pitch, 50,000 people in the crowd. They're sitting on the top, top section of the back, or one from the top. And he turns around to his madrich, this boy Daniel, and he says to this rov who's with him, this madrich who's got him into his Yiddish guy, he said, Rabbi, can God really hear me? He says, I'm asking. Daniel turns and he says, God, if you can hear me, that ball down there on the pitch, I want to catch it. And in Daniel's words to me, Rabbi, not five minutes later, this ball was kicked from down there right back up. And a fellow from behind me throws it forward, it comes plop into my hands, and I jumped up and I said, I'm going to see and Oritz. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to see Lechem Shemaim, I don't know. <laughs> Daniel Mednik is married to Frum Girl, living in Yerushalayim today, learning half day, working half day, on his way to being a Tamit Chochom and growing with a Teredika family. How many portals and doors can we collectively open up together if we realize the Chochmah slave that we have? The Chochmah slave. We have to believe that we can do it. Feel inspired to reach out and get others to reach out. Bring others in and spread the message of Project Inspire of the famous words of Rabbi Noach Zichrein and Ivrocha, to awaken the sleeping giant to bring clearly soil together, to make sure we have the fulfillment as we said in the mirrors tonight, to see that fulfillment when we all do it together. It's biodenu. It's in our ability. If we can take this message of Project Inspire further and inspire others to connect to Achenu Bnei Yisrael, surely, surely we will see all those points of light together coming from around the world. All those neshamas, aflame, illuminated, coming together on Harabais. We'll see the Eish, the flyer of Torah burning, not just in the building of Eish HaTorah, but in Harabais. And we'll see Kalali Yisrael have that Eir Chodosh Al in Torah, united in peace, as one. As Kalali Yisrael eternal in Yerushalayim Rakhodesh, we ask you, Sedek, we may of your main, or main, or main, or Abraham. Two years ago, Charles Ramirez from San Antonio, Texas, was dating an Israeli girl. A completely secular Jew, Charles is told by this young woman that to date an Israeli girl, you need to learn more about your Judaism. Not knowing where to turn, Charles, of course, turned to H.com and signed himself up for a learning partner. He was set up with a learning partner from Project Inspire named Evan Schutzman. When Evan signed up for a one-on-one -on -one Chavrusa, he wrote as follows right after the Project Inspire Tisha B'Av film in 2016. He wrote, I have the schuss to learn at Yeshiva's Madrega Sa'adam in Hillcrest, the night yeshiva program geared towards working professionals in the Queens community for the past six years. I've been thinking about this sort of program for a while, and finally, after watching your video, cannot allow my Sahara to tell me no. So sign me up, please, and with Hashem's help, we will make it work. Charles Ramirez 
came all the way from San Antonio, Texas to join us here tonight. And I want to ask Charles if he can come up here on stage. There's one thing I didn't tell you about Charles. Charles and Evan have never met. And so tonight, Charles, we asked Evan to join us here up on stage at the Project Inspiring Convention to meet for the first, very first time. Evan Schutzman. Where is he? Where is that guy? <laughs> Woo! Hey! And here he is. Here he is, Evan and Charles have been learning for two years together. <laughs> Evan and Charles, Evan, you've said that you've learned far more from learning with Charles than Charles could have possibly learned from you. Very true. Today, we would like to present with you a book that you can continue learning for many more years to come. A book called Lilmaid Ulalameid for both of you to have on behalf of Project Inspired to keep on learning, to keep on growing, and hopefully Amazing. to become a Tamil Thank you All so right, much. thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles and Evan are not alone. Hundreds of partners and partnerships have been created through Project Inspire's one-on-one -on -one learning program. If you could please take out your phones, now is the time. Take out your phones. Don't let a Project Inspire convention go by without signing up for a learning partner. Now I should mention, if you're learning with a partner already, or if you'd like to sign up through Partners in Torah, through Ura Torah Mates, the point here is to learn and inspire somebody. But if you're not signed up, take out your phones and text one, the number one, T-O and the number one, to 97000, and you'll receive a bounce back that will sign you up for a one-on-one -on -one Chavrusa. There are thousands of partnerships created and it, while it doesn't have to be someone from San Antonio, Texas, it could be someone from your backyard. But please, you can make as much noise as you want while you talk to your phones and send your WhatsApp messages, as this was a good opportunity to take out your phones anyway. But please, use the opportunity to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one learning partner today as there are many, many, many more Charleses out there even in our own backyards. For those who are technically, ch technologically challenged, there are cards outside for you to sign up, but please don't let this opportunity go by without, without signing up for a one-on-one -on -one chavrusa. Are we done? We already have, do we have a thousand peers signed up from today? <clears throat> okay.